Beauty was always an issue for me as a child because my parents were absolutely stunning. My sister was cute as pie. <laughs> All of the girls ran after my brother. And every time I looked in the mirror, I thought, well, when I was born, God was on a lunch break. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> this is how young people can think, you know. <laughs> it's really something when you're always comparing yourself to people around you. You will always, if you're always comparing yourself to other people, you can trick yourself easily into mm -hmm. believing you're greater than or mm -hmm. less than mm -hmm. instead of just being who you are. Mm -hmm. When I was 11 years old, because of my speech patterns that my mother had insisted upon, grew up in Houston, Texas, but we spoke as if we were from someplace else. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was Presumably not Brooklyn. No, not no. Brooklyn. I was selected to be the mistress of ceremonies for um, an interscholastic musical presentation that were all of the schools. And I had learned my script so well that on the night of the performance, I stood in the spotlight for the first time. The light was blinding. I had my script in my hand, but because I had studied it and prepared so well, I didn't have to read it. I stood and I talked to the light. <laughs> and I just talked to the light all night long. <laughs> and when the evening was finished and people were leaving the Coliseum, I heard several mothers say, oh, there's the little girl who spoke so beautifully. Mm. Isn't she beautiful? And I thought, that's it. When I grow up, I'll be an actress. <laughs> <laughs> and they're beautiful all the time. Wow. But what I didn't understand and wouldn't be able to articulate for many years was that the beauty that I ex had experienced had nothing to do with what I was wearing or the curls in my hair mm. or the ruffles on my socks. It was the beauty of communication from the heart. And that's what acting is, is it not? Wow.